Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where we are taking a look at the newest map on Mod Hub, Swinyaki. This map is brought to us by Norblin. It runs 424 megabytes, so it's not terribly resource heavy. It is interesting, however, according to Mr. Norblin, or Miss Norblin, or Norblin. <laughs> um, this is a four times scale map made from real life terrain in 90% accuracy. The rest is filled with my fantasy because of game limitations. The map has six pre-made places for your own farm marked by green dots on the mini-map, 244 fields including meadows, four selling points. Selling points for potatoes and sugar beets are separated, a biogas plant, a sawmill, a huge forest, hilly terrain, missions on the field, and missions on the fields and transport missions, and it is seasons ready. The map maker also recommends that you start as farm manager. And based on what I've seen, that's a good recommendation. Now, this is another Polish map. We've had a lot of Polish maps. That's interesting. The Polish map makers are apparently very enthusiastic about farming sim. But in traditional Polish map style, we start at the bus stop. I don't know why. Those guys really like to uh, start us out at a bus stop. But, our equipment is a long, long way away. I'm just going to take a look at our map real quick so we can see we're all the way up here. Kind of in a little village area. But our equipment is way down here. <laughs> so we're going to need to get down there to uh, jump into anything. And then we'll start taking a look at everything. So this is your starting equipment. That's it. That's all. No more. You've got a small trailer, a very small Amazon cedar, a Fent favorite, a weight, the traditional New Holland TX32 harvester, and a small cultivator. That's what you start with in New Farmer, as well as Field 158, 15 acres. That's a pretty pretty good sized field for that small equipment. Um, I think you should take them up on their advice and start in Farm Manager, to be completely honest. Now you can see this map is pretty traditional Polish map. You know, the, the long strips of fields all separated. That's what we've come to expect from our Polish map makers. And this one does not disappoint. Small, small. Not small, but long strips of fields separated by grass or bushes or weeds or something like that. So let's get into this. Um, as you can see, you know, our equipment list is awfully short. Plenty of sale points, however. We have the barn, which is traditional. We have the Mlez Carina. I'm going to butcher all of this, but that's a dairy sawmill. Now, scup one through four, scup means purchase. So just purchase point one, purchase point two, purchase three, purchase four. The scup baraki, which is purchase beetroot or beets. Yayaka or jajaka or however you pronounce that. I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher these words today, but those are two separate egg sale points. We've got the scup zimanaki which is potatoes, and then we've got the standard spinnery. As far as crops go, it's all traditional. There's nothing new in particular here, as you can see. And we do have contracts, and these contracts do fill out quite nicely. So there's plenty of contract work to do. I won't say they pay exceptionally well, but there's lots and lots and lots of contracts you can get your hands on. Now, as far as field pricing goes, I found the fields to be somewhat expensive. This is a 50, almost 15 acre field, $400,000. 22 acres, $624,000. 11 acres, $300,000. 
to some of our, there are plenty of small, small fields though. So we've got two and a half acres at 75. So there's a nice wide variety of field types throughout. We've got our smaller ones. Got a little tiny strip of a field right here. You could buy for a mere $32,000. That's just over an acre. So $30,000 $30, an acre is pretty steep. And that's about the price that we're looking at. Our largest field pretty much appears to be 155 up here. 35 acres at almost a million dollars. So, with that said, I think we just need to take a look around. And we will start actually. The shop is way over here in the village. And the village is actually quite nice. So, it's a nice setup over here. I had, uh, had an issue trying to find out where this truck was parked at. Okay, so we're just going to drive around a little bit because this map is massive. I'm going to do a little bit of driving around. Just, just hit a few hot spots. Is this gate openable? Yes, it is. Very good. Okay. It is a well laid out map. It's interesting. And like I said, the village here is really quite nice. And I'm going to get the camera out just a little bit so you can see more of what's going on. Lots of nice, unique styled houses. You know, nothing. It's not just a bunch of houses plopped down. It's a, you know, well thought out. We've got a fuel station here. Uh, the traditional European roundabout, which is becoming more and more. <laughs> more and more something that Harv can't drive worth a darn. But most of our sale points are down in this corner of the map. The vast majority of them are down here. And you can see, you know, as we're coming by, now this is the spinnery, I believe. No, that's not the spinnery. Let's take a look and make sure we know what we're talking about. Okay, purchase point. Egg sale point up here. But yeah, I mean, there are, most everything is tucked into this one site, which makes sense to some degree. You know, this would be sort of the industrial hub of the area, you know, something like that. I actually have always kind of found it unusual that, uh, you know, these purchase points are spread all over creation and not in one sort of more centralized area. Not that they all need to be bunched together but more along the lines of you know you go to any town pretty much anywhere on one side of town you're going to have sort of an industrial hub or agricultural hub you know a kind of a place where wholesalers congregate to buy their goods but this has it all tucked together quite nicely here and we've got our animal dealer coming up here on the left. Now one thing that I have noticed about this map is that a lot of the interactive zone markers are missing. So if you're if you're looking to uh, to find out where to buy and sell, you're going to have to do some hunting around. And as you can see, all of our traditional animals are here. But you notice there's no zone marker here. So it is going to take some searching to figure out, you know, where your tip end points are. Most of the, you know, the grated tip end points where you've got grates, you know, pretty standard silo style. Those are all marked, but any building that doesn't have that style doesn't seem to have their tip points or their sale points marked very well, if at all. One of them that I was particularly digging around at was the uh, the spinnery. This has to be our bale cell point or our barn. There's 
There's our dairy there, obviously. Pretty standard dairy. Now, there are, is quite a bit going on here. Um, as the map maker said, and, and when we do our flyover, I'll kind of point this out a little bit better. But there is six places that you can put your farms. And on a four times map, yeah, you're probably going to be wanting to play with friends. Now, as you can see right here, this is our potato cell point. But there's nothing marked as to a tip in point. Now, I think we can safely assume that it's going to be right through this building. And I guess, I mean, if you really wanted to to make an argument for it, that, that would be more true to real life. Got lots of potatoes stacked up in here. You know, you go to a place for the first time, you're going to be trying to figure out where you go and what you do. But at the same time, there's going to be somebody there you could say, hey, where do I drop my potatoes off? <laughs> of course there would be. Now this map is heavily populated with trees. Very heavily populated with trees. So if you're into forestry, you are going to get your fill on this map. It's got a large forestry area, but anywhere that's not forested, specifically forested, this is the spinnery that I was thinking of. There's no interactive zone marker here. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say just about right here is where you're going to drop your uh, your cotton or wool bales. Although it could be back along this row right here. And we'll just, just a little bit more of a drive. We'll get out into the fields a little bit so you can see them. Here's another one of our scups, our purchase points. One other nice thing about this map is it's, it's well populated. And what I mean by that is that there are lots of houses dotted around and they're, they're kind of grouped together. You get rows of houses, and I see a road that we'll grab really quickly. So you can kind of see a little bit better what I'm talking about. Yeah, this. yeah so you go down a country road like this, and this, this feels very USA to me. Gravel road along the fields, but you know, you've got houses dotted all along here. And they're all unique, interesting. Looks like that was just kind of a worn out building back there with no roof on it. See a lot of that too. <laughs> very sparse. When you get out into the fields, it's very, very sparsely uh, littered with trees. You get into the village areas, which there are plenty. Yeah, let's go cross country a little bit. Now we made it all the way back to our starting farm here, or our starting plot of land where our equipment is parked. So yes, it's a very traditional Polish map. Um, no new crops, no new animals, all standard fare. Recommended that you start on farm manager. Plenty of sail points and nice little villagey type sections around the map. So at this point, I think it's time just to do a flyover, get a little broader feel for what's going on here in Swi Swiniaki. And um, just, just take a little better look around from the air. 
The one thing that I uh, I found interesting, I did look up the translation for Swiniaki, and it means piglets. <laughs> so I don't know uh, what the map maker might be trying to say with that, but yeah, and this will give you a little better view of what I was talking about. You know, you've got these these roads that are populated, and that 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 would be pretty standard. You would see a lot of that especially in the u.s but you know i haven't traveled to poland so i would imagine that's that's fairly accurate it seems like especially in agricultural communities they kind of grow up that way you know people want to be close to other people but at the same time they don't want to be that close to other people and here you can kind of get a feel for the large forested area plenty of trees to cut if that's your bag And this will give you a little better look at the town here, too. I really like the layout of the town. I think this was this area has done has been done particularly well. I think that looks really good. And then we have our biogas plant situated out here in the middle of the forest, which, you know, frankly, I don't see a biogas plant being anywhere close to town. I bet they're a little bit smelly. That would be my impression, but pretty standard. You're going to have your silage cell point. You're going to have your digestate tank here. And I did not look at the cost of our biogas plant. Yeah, half a million dollars. That's a bone I have to pick. <laughs> I realize it's part of the game I understand it but I've never believed that a farmer should have to buy or become a biogas executive to sell silage if it's a sale point make it a sale point and be done with it I can buy my own bunker silos a lot cheaper than that so yeah this is Swiniaki the newest mod map by Norblin I hope you found this map tour helpful, useful, informational, or otherwise. If you did, do me a favor. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I do appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.